by this wheel, by that wheel. So many videos on YouTube which recommend which you see to get. But this video is different. Today I'm gonna tell you what I don't recommend and what you should not get as a EUC rider. So let me tell you more about it. I know that I included a lot of data in this video, so I made sure that you can follow along by looking at a spreadsheet which is available on my website linked below, wrongway.info. And there you can find all of the models of electric unicycle that I mentioned in this video, and you can find out if they have a smart BMS, do they have a strong axle, a weak axle, and basically all of the points that I'm mentioning in this video. So, Feel free to tag along there if you're all about spreadsheets, data, etc, etc. Oh, I love my new violet hair. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in this video I'll give you seven points and tell you what to not get if you want to get an electric unicycle. Keep in mind, little disclaimer here, these are my opinions. I rode for over 50,000 kilometers on EUCs. I tested over 80 of them, believe me, I, I recently made a list. So I have some knowledge about them, but this video is not the sort of be all end all. So still look at forums, check out the comment section, what kind of experience people had with their electric unicycles. Nevertheless, if electric unicycles don't meet the criteria that I am mentioning in this video, there's a very high chance that I'm not gonna test them. I also made sure that from this year on, I'm not gonna review any new electric unicycle that doesn't have a smart BMS. So manufacturers are stepping it up, but there's still a lot of EUCs on the market that I think do not deserve your money. So let's get into it. Starting with number one, I would never ever get a electric unicycle with a LG M50T battery pack. Keep in mind that those LG M50T battery issues are mostly related to used wheels because all of the new wheels don't have those battery cells and the change was a couple years ago. So this point is mostly dedicated to users that are buying a used wheel or there is some stock left over in a, in a shop or there's you know an Amazon seller who has it, like an old model. But basically it's for you guys that want to purchase a used wheel or for you guys that already have a wheel that you purchased a while ago. Now there has been some fires with electric unicycles, but all of the fires that I know of happened with EUCs that were equipped with LG M50T battery packs. And lately I've also heard of one with a LG M50T LT battery pack. Now, does this mean that every electric unicycle with this battery can spontaneously combust? No, I don't want to be fear-mongering here, but there is a reason why e-wheels in America recalled all of their Bigot slash Gauntway products that had uh, LG M50T batteries installed. <laughs> and then they exchanged those battery packs for Samsung battery packs, which are obviously better because we didn't hear of any UCs catching on fire with those battery packs. Like, if you heard of any, comment below. Now, who is responsible for it is kind of hard to tell because if it was just one manufacturer, we hear mostly of Bigode, uh, then it would be the fault of the manufacturer. But there were also fires reported with uh, Kingsong. I believe there were also some with the Inmotion V11, although that might have been water damage as well. Nevertheless, if there is a chance of the insides of the a battery cell flowing onto the BMS, which might be a fire hazard, but also might just lead to a dead battery pack. Then I, I don't want I don't want a UC equipped with those battery cells. Now I would say that the biggest chance of a faulty battery pack is with Bigode MSPs, Bigode uh, Nicholas, the hundred volt wheels from a couple years ago. Essentially every high performance you see, which were basically only big old wheels at that time, especially with a small capacity. Because not only were those cells not as strong and they have a bit of a flaw where they don't vent properly. So instead of venting the gas away, if there's sort of uh, uh, the chemicals are re reacting inside, they just 
poof, explode. And if that goes onto the BMS and battery pack, well, then you have a thermal runaway and then you better run away. So on top of that, those EUCs were high performance, so they were draining and using those battery packs to a much bigger, more intense extent than weaker EUCs like the Emotion V11 or the well, Kingsong S4 depends because that's how, that wheel has a tiny uh, battery pack. Nevertheless, if you told me that you have an EUC for free with an LG M50T battery pack, I would say, no, God, please, no, no. No! No! Thank you, move on. And just to be clear, guys, here, um, this is still a very small percentage of uh, all of those wheels that have had issues, but it's still big enough for me to tell you that you shouldn't get a wheel with this battery pack. And honestly, I think there should be some sort of investigation towards that, either LG recalling their cells or the manufacturers from China, uh, or distributors, because honestly, sometimes, every once in a while, I hear of a electric unicycle fire. Usually I, I ask about the LG M50T battery pack and I see most likely yes. And honestly, I'm sick of it. I don't wanna see it. Let's put an end to it. Of course, not every EUC equipped with this battery is a fire hazard, but again, you don't really wanna risk it. All right, so number two on the list is I wouldn't get a electric unicycle without a smart BMS. Now, I've been pushing the industry for years to implement at least a very basic smart BMS where you can see all of the cell sets in your battery pack and check if they're all right. For example, with the prior problem, Usually, if a battery pack goes wrong, you can't charge it. And people are just like, oh, I guess I'm gonna ride a bit. Maybe I can plug it into the charger and see what happens. This is exactly what you shouldn't do at all costs. If there's a problem with a battery, especially if it doesn't charge to full, you just, I don't know, you should probably just leave the UC outside or take the battery out immediately into a battery repairing facility or, or um, co company. Never charge it then. And if you would have a smart BMS in this case, you would see, oh, one battery cell is at, you know, too high of a voltage in the app or too low, low of a voltage. Cool, now I know it, I don't write it, I fix it. For the longest time, this has not been the case. So I would not buy any electric unicycle right now without, without a smart BMS. And this disqualifies so many of them. Not even like only the old ones. So, so the old ones like the Emotion V11, V10, V8, V5, uh, the <laughs> Kingsong 16S. Um, by the way, the new ones do have a smart BMS, so check which version it is. But the old ones don't, 16X, 18XL, uh, 16S, 14D, 14M, 14S. Uh, veterans just started having a smart BMS with the links. So all of the prior wheels, you can check which side, which battery pack, left or right is okay, but you can't see the cells. Now you can tell, you know, if something's wrong by noticing that there's a dramatic change in range, or you can't charge the UC up to its full voltage. Usually it's like three, four volts below the top voltage, but you know, you can just do it with a smart BMS. Like why? It's, it's cheap to implement and it needs to be done. Uh, when it comes to Bigode, the first wheel with a smart BMS is the Extreme, which I do have right there. And all of their prior wheels for me are disqualified, just as well as their new A2. I think the Falcon won't have a smart BMS, so that's out for me. And uh, M10 for basically the whole lineup, except for the Extreme and ET Max. Why? It is peace of mind. You can check what's up with the smart BMS, and then you go, okay, something is wrong, I need to ma maintain it. I feel like I need to do a little disclaimer about that as well, because depending on the brand, there is a special function which won't allow you to ride if the difference between two or four battery packs is too big. Now, when it comes to InMotion, all of their um, wheels that have two battery packs because or four like the v14 uh, do have a function where the difference is too big won't allow you to write so that's good but the difference needs to be significant in order for that to happen 
So while you don't have a smart BMS, you shouldn't have a tragical failure while uh, riding or damage the battery pack. With Kingsong, it's a bit different because just two basically of their wheels don't have the split battery input into the motherboard. So even their smaller wheels like the 14D, S, 16S, um, there's a split battery pack. And if there's too big of a difference between those, then um, yeah, it will tilt back. The only ones that don't have that is the 16XS and the Kingsong 14M. When it comes to Leaper Kim, all of their wheels do have split battery packs. And when they're, the difference is too big, it will tilt back and beep. Um, but again, no smart BMS except for the links. When it comes to Bigode, I guess it's the most complicated because um, since the EX20S, I believe they started to have a board that separates all of the batteries. Now, the biggest issue with those Bigode wheels prior to this um, sort of battery distribution board is that the battery was connected to the motherboard just via a main electricity connector. So there's no communication at all, at all between the board and the battery. And there was no way to find out anything about said battery packs except for their voltage output. So there would be no beep if there's something wrong. There would be just nothing. The only way to find out what's happening with um, those prior Bigode slash Gotway wheels that something is wrong is that they wouldn't charge to a full battery or you would notice a significant drop in range. And that is super dangerous because you can actually keep on riding and not notice that something's wrong. Or you will you would try to charge it to full, although the battery's already damaged and you shouldn't ever charge it. So that is why those prior older Bigode wheels are just so tricky and so dangerous um, to, to work with and to ride on. It just doesn't give you any peace of mind at all. So then if there would be a big discrepancy between separate different batteries, um, it would beep, but sometimes the beep would be very quiet, like on a Master or on the Master Pro. So you could still ride and it wouldn't tilt back. The only thing is the beep. So I guess on Bigode, it's the most sort of, um, is it the most concerning one? I know, it's just annoying that it will not tilt back. It will just beep. And that's something you might actually not notice, but once you come to a stop, then you'll probably hear it. So even though there is no smart BMS, it is also not like there's no safety features at all. But either way, smart BMS should be the standard, all right? And if you don't have it, then naturally you can take out the battery, which is a lot more hassle, and then manually check all of the cell sets. So no smart BMS, no purchase for me, and also no video for me. So if you're wondering why some EUCs don't get a review on my channel, that's exactly why. No smart BMS, no review. Sorry. Mic drop. Let's get into number three. So number three on the list, what would I not get of an EUC? I would not get an EUC that has a weak, small axle. Now, no, it's not a thing that is really talked about all that much. And I wonder why, because it's just such a basic thing. If you look at all of the smaller range EUCs, uh, Kingsong 14D, Emotion V5, even the V12, this veteran Sherman OG, the Kingsong 16X, 18XL, all of those wheels just have a small axle. Now, you might not have an issue for 3,000 kilometers. Heck, you might not have an issue for 10,000 kilometers or 20,000 kilometers. But there's people reporting of bending their axle or breaking their axle. And if it's such a common issue, why are those UCs still being produced? And why don't all of the new wheels have either a big steel axle like the Veteran Sherman S, the Veteran Sherman Max, Patton, Lynx, or, or why don't they just have a hollow motor design like the Bigode wheels after basically the MSP, all of their bigger wheels, so the RS, Bigode Extreme, the Master, the Master Pro, all of their suspension wheels. So with lighter riders, you might not have an issue. If you're 50, 60 kilograms, it might be fine. But if you are 70, 80 and above, if you do like off-roading, popping off curbs, something that you first didn't think you would be doing, but after 100 kilometers, you're already doing it, stairs, uh, but even just regular casual riding, you never know when you might bend the axle 
and a bent axle might even lead to the tire scrubbing against the inner shell, which might melt the inner shell, which if it's made of plastic, and then you go to directly to the battery, which is just in string wrap. So it's crazy, but this story happened to a friend of mine. So I do still have a Kingsong 14D and a Kingsong 16S. The 16S is for testing. Uh, I'm very careful with it because I'm aware of the issue. But come on, you see manufacturers, you need to step it up and get a strong axle, as said, thick steel axle into the, the, your EUCs. And I mean every EUC, not just the big expensive ones, also the cheaper ones and the more affordable ones. That's what I'm talking about. This shit means something to me, man. Number four on the list is nothing else than not water resistant wheels. And until this day, just one EUC manufacturer has an IP rating both for the wheel itself, the housing, the shell, and the battery, and it is in motion. And although there were some water damage issues reported with V11s, I believe some with V12s, if it's covered by warranty and if your battery is sealed properly, and this is a thing they do really well, then well, you're good, basically. So when it comes to in motion, you're good. When it comes to bigode, they don't have a IP rating and there it really depends which model you buy and, and what kind of waterproofing you'll get. And I mean, they had so many batches, so many versions that it's super difficult to keep track on. But basically, the newer the wheel, the better the waterproofing. So if you get a Bigode MSX, then it's waterproof as a fishnet stocking. If you get a Bigode Extreme, then it's actually really good and could be even better than some Kingsong wheels. Moving on, Kingsong wheels, they also don't have a waterproof uh, rating and there it also depends on the model. So all of their smaller sort of wheels, their city wheels, 14, the 16S, 18XL, those are like the egg-shaped ones. They have pretty good waterproofing and a well waterproof battery. When it comes to the Kingsong 16X, it has a lot of holes, but uh, seemingly it just doesn't stop working. So I, I guess it's fine, but it gets very dirty from the inside. Uh, the S22, I don't really like that. The S22 has a hole with, close to the charge port and close to the power button. So that is a wheel that I would avoid riding through rain. And if I would be caught by rain, I would either put something over the top or just ride really carefully and especially do my best of avoiding to crash because it might just slip over and then it gets in and then you're, you're screwed because the battery also doesn't have shrink wrap. So the S16, I didn't open it up yet, but seemingly it has a lot better gaskets, so should be fine. Uh, the S19, similar story. Uh, the S18, I think that had actually pretty good waterproofing. And that's basically it when it comes to King Song. When it comes to in motion, their wheels, IP rating, and it's generally good. I would say that the only one where you need to watch out for a little bit is the V11 because it has a hole in front of the front light and then might just go down or in the back there's also like a vent hole I believe so you just need to be aware of that and with the V12 I think there was something close to the power button but uh, if you just tape up the screen and the power button I, I guess you should be all right uh, with the V13 good waterproofing V14 should be good as well but I didn't look at it yet but I think they learned their lesson just as well as the other manufacturers uh, when it comes to veteran wheels, the veteran Sherman lineup, um, stuff can get through the buttons. So it's best if you just tape up the whole top of the wheel and then you're pretty good. I mean, it's not submergible, but it is all right. Um, through the trolley handles, some stuff can get it in too. So if you're riding in rain, just keep the trolley handle closed or tape it up. There's even like a small silicone gasket you can get on Thingiverse and print it out for yourself. I think I went through with the models I wanted to tell about. If the EUC that you are looking for was on the list of not being so good of a water resistant wheel and you don't live in Southern California where Mar Marty Bach lives, then don't get this wheel. Okay, and number five is wheels that are too annoying and frustrating to work on. And here in motion is very annoying to me because of their tons of screws, tons of layers, tons of different complication just to change a tire. If you want, you ever wanted to change a tire on a V11, 
like good luck get a day off and then another day off for your therapy session and getting back uh, to your normal self after your full frustration of changing a tire on the wheel it's horrible when it comes to bigode again endless models i would just simplify it if your bigode is before the name change from gauntway to bigode then it's pretty simple but you can break a lot of stuff like threads screws it, it just break upon crashing and, and then you need new parts uh, when it comes to their newer lineup of wheels so after the bigode master they're very easy to work on actually and you can very easily change the tire as well so bigode has off pretty good to work on when it comes to veteran all of their wheels are not too bad to work on uh, when it comes to tire changes they are not as easy as they could be on, on the links on the sherman on the Patton, the, their suspension wheels uh, the Sherman is actually surprisingly easy to change the tire on. The Sherman OG and the Sherman Max. But uh, other than that, they're fine. Like, it's not too bad, not too good. Uh, definitely not as frustrating as the Emotion wheels. When it comes to King Song, all of their, like, the, their older wheels, the egg-shaped wheels, they're super easy to work on. Quite lovely, if I say so myself. Uh, when it comes to their newer wheels with suspension, um, it uh, depends, but yeah, there you can usually strip the bolts, like that's the most annoying part about them. So you don't strip the bolts so much on the Bigode and the Veteran wheels, but on the King Song, especially the motor bolts to the King Song S22, not nice, not nice at all. So number six on the list, I would not recommend to get a wheel that is heavier than half of your rider weight. So if I weigh 80 kilograms with gear, I am good with the wheel up to 40 kilograms, but if I cross over it to 45 or 50, then I start to have trouble to brake or to balance or to accelerate um, in the fashion that I would like or go off-road or make tight turns. Now, this is not um, something that is settled in stone and if you grab something heavier, then you'll be dead in, in three kilometers. No. It's just what I found to be the best sort of sweet spot in terms of getting the max range, because that's what, where the most of the weight comes from, and the comfort with the suspension, and your abilities as a rider. So usually lighter than that will be still great and even better than the heavier wheel. But for me, if I get a 45 kilogram wheel, I just don't feel as good anymore. So all of the wheels that I have here right now are 40 kilograms or below, and I'm just very happy with that. Let's get on to number seven. And number seven is just the conclusion. So what is left after all of those disqualifying uh, categories? Let's get on with all of the brands. So number one with the veteran, we just have the links because it just have the, it's the only wheel that has a smart PMS. Sure, it's not super easy to work on, but it's fairly easy to work on. Uh, you need some maintenance with the shock. It's not as easy to change the tire but everything is kind of fine and water resistance as well and most importantly smart bms when it comes to in motion honestly it's just the v14 for me i mean all of their smaller wheels have a weak have a weak axle they don't have smart bms's none of their small wheels have smart bms's uh, the v11y is just a nightmare to work on and i do not trust in their drumstick suspension like their their air suspension is just Maybe it will survive a bit if you like ride in a chill fashion, but uh, Getting these out again and exchanging those and you know fixing it. I just ain't nobody got time for that The V13 is too heavy for me. The V12 has a regular small axle So I'm just left with the V14 when it comes to King Song uh, I have actually a couple written down and I also wrote down none because none of their wheels have basically all of the things that I would like. So all of their smaller egg-shaped wheels, they have smart BMSs and those are the only small wheels that have a smart BMS. So if I can recommend a wheel that is small, then it will be the King Song lineup of wheels. 14D, 16S, uh, 16XS, they have smart BMSs, which is super important, but they also have cast iron axles, so they can break. So can I really recommend it? Uh, I guess so if you're just not riding too heavily but then it also might happen that you still bend the axle or something bad happens so yeah it gets half of a recommendation for, uh, right there and their bigger wheels the S16, S19, S22 don't have 
a shrink wrap battery. Now, in this moment, the S22 is the worst for me just because of the gaping holes close to the charge port and the power button. And then water can get into the battery compartment and there, the battery is not shrink wrapped. The S19 and S16 seem a bit better because I believe they still don't have a shrink wrapped battery, but the sealing of the batteries is just a lot better and the ceiling around the, around the motherboard area. So S16, S19 get a bit of a recommendation, S22 not that much, and you still need to keep in mind that you need to take care of the bolts of the suspension, the geometry, tighten them every once in a while because they might just break. Uh, and even if you tighten them, they might break if you do a lot of jumps. Moving on <laughs> to Bigode, and at Bigode, there's only the extreme, just one wheel. <laughs> It has a smart BMS, he said it has a good axle, it's great to work on. And um, I didn't have pretty much any issues with it. The suspension might be smoother, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It's not that, that expensive either. So the Extreme is, that's my recommendation. But the ET Max, too heavy. All of their other wheels don't have a smart BMS. So T4 Pro, A2, M10 for like all of their smaller wheels. And by the way, Extreme Bull, um, I just tested the Extreme Bull Commander and that had a thinner axle and I didn't test any of their future wheels but they also don't have a smart BMS so eh. So in any way I hope you found this video useful also please comment below what you think about those criteria now I mentioned those criteria as being deal breakers for me and that is like going outside of the zone is not something that's comfortable for me or something or a wheel that I would recommend. But there's still plenty of people, you know, living with their wheels that don't have a smart BMS or a strong axle or other features that I've mentioned in this video. So take this with a bit of a grain of salt, uh, but also take it with a bit of a grain of pepper because I do have quite a bit of experience and I fell because of a water related cutoff on big old wheels. I guess over five times. Yeah, I remember this bigot. I do not forget. With that said, again, I hope you liked the video. Uh, get a bicycle if you don't want to have any issues and cheaper parts. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. And yes, I do have a bicycle. I just ride it very rarely because I can get uh, further with those things. And it's just so much more fun to ride. You see, but yeah, I mean, the parts on bicycles are just uh, more available and they, they don't need charging. But then you, you get a little bit sweaty, but uh, you know, depends how far you go. Yeah, bye.